Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. Today, in this screencast, we are going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set on Lego sets, and we're going to train a model to predict the, um, the number of pieces in the Lego set. It's a little silly, I know, but what it's going to give us the opportunity to do is practice how to, um, how to version and deploy the model. We're going to use um, Docker. We're going to put the model inside of a Docker container that then can be taken to wherever it is that you need to have your, um, your model give predictions. This isn't an introduction to Docker kind of, um, kind of screencast, but you will see me walk through it. And so even if you haven't used Docker a lot, hopefully you can um, understand what's going on as we walk through. All right, let's get started. So. Um, this week's Tidy Tuesday data set is all about Lego sets, which is so fun. Um, let's look and see what we have here. Um, this is a nice, this is a good size um, data set for me to do a little bit of a of a demo here for machine learning. So we've got the set, the set number, like the like the identifier for it, the name, and you can see these have uh, these can be the uh, duplicated, right? The year that it came out, which is so interesting, right? Lots of space minifigures in 1979. Um, this this um, theme ID, which we could join up with another table. And then the number of parts here. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to look at that number of parts. So let's look at this here and Let's look at um, how that is distributed, and we are going to see if we can, if we can um, uh, predict this this number of parts. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So let's see the number of parts. So Lego set. Let's. Um, I bet there's zeros in there. Let's see what happens if we um, put this on a log scale, because you notice there are a, a ton of. Um, all right, so there are there are zeros in here. So some of the Lego sets have no Lego pieces in them. <laughs> that will be interesting to see. Num parts greater than zero, like that. That's gonna look the same because I just took it out. So. <clears throat> This is on a log scale. So there's a ton of Lego sets that only have a few pieces, right? One, 10. And then it looks like the peak, like the, the mode or, you know, the, the, the peak here is at, you know, I don't know, like 20 ish or it's somewhere between 10 and a hundred. And then there's very few Lego sets that have a thousand or even 10,000 um, pieces. So those are the really rare ones. Most of them are over here. So this is uh, distributed. Uh, this is like log normal. So probably want to take that into consideration when we are doing our, um, our modeling. Let's look at the Lego sets. What kind of thing do we have? Um, it's so bad to compare to zero like this, but let's do it. Okay, so these are not really Lego sets. These are video games, and I bet there's other other stuff like books, video games. These are not really sets, so let's not. I'm going to take those out of my my data set here. All right, so we are going to build just like a like just kind of blow through building a model, and in the interest of talking more about um, deploying the model. So I am going to so so this is just going to go super duper fast. Lego sets, let's uh, do, let's only keep the ones that have at least one piece of Lego in them. I'm going to just, I'll see, so let's say that num parts, let's take the log of it um, so we can model the log and let's split it, oh, initial split like so and let's do stratified, especially you know, with this distribution here, we want to make sure we stratify here. Lego split, like so. Okay, we have split. Let's get the training data out. 
Let's get the testing data out. Oh my gosh, okay. Like so, okay. And let's create some folds because even though we're gonna blow through this, let's use resampling so that we have a, a pretty good estimate of how we expect this model to do. I mean, because let's be honest, if we're going to predict the number of parts from the name, like, I, I hope none of you are expecting this to be like a really, really highly performing model. Because let's, it's not going to, let's, let's be honest right here, but it's, it's going to be fun and we are going to show how to deploy a model. Okay, so this part here, this is spending our data budget. It's honestly one of the most important parts of the machine learning process. So we have um, training data, testing data, and resampling folds that are created from the resamp for the resampled training set so that we can estimate how well our model is doing. Okay, so let's, we're going to make a recipe. We're gonna predict the number of Lego parts from the name. And oh yeah, so this is a text data. So I'm gonna use text recipes to do feature engineering for text. I am gonna tokenize the name. Um, let's only keep the top um, two, 200, the top 200 um, uh, words that are used in the Lego name, Lego set names. Let's uh, weight this by term frequency. And let's normalize it. Um, you know what? Let's let's do TFIDF instead. And then I don't have to normalize it because they'll all be on the same scale. Let's call this the Lego recipe, like so. There we go. Okay, so we have TFIDF for the words in the names of the Lego sets. Um, let's do um, just a model that's really good for a first, you know, kind of like if you're starting out with a text data set. Uh, a linear support vector machine is a really good way to go. Let's say mode equals regression. And that, I think the default engine is what I want. Yep. Okay, so let's put these together. Let's call it Lego workflow. It is a workflow. I'm going to put my Lego recipe in and my support linear support vector machine. So this is like a good option for um, if you had a text data set and you just kind of wanted to get like a good basic model going. Um, so let us um, use fit resample. So I'm going to do, do parallel. Let's set the seed. Um, let us, so let's call it the Lego result. And let's say fit resamples uh, for the workflow using the folds. Okay. So let's let that go. So what we're doing is we're fitting this resample. Uh, we're fitting this, this, um, you know, non-tunable workflow. There's just one kind of model here to all the folds. And let's see what we uh, what do we expect. What, what do we get? How, how did things go? <clears throat> okay, so our R squared is not high, but this, this is what we're saying, right? Like um, the, th we don't explain a lot of the variation in the number of parts by the words that make up the name. But uh, you know, I mean, we 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 get something out of here, so that's that's good. And this, remember, this is now on the log scale, so it's the number of parts, but on the log scale. So that's um that's the RMSE on the number of parts, on the log ten scale. Okay. <clears throat> So even though we're blasting through this first part of training a model, um, we, we are still using resampling too so that we can estimate how well it is doing. So now let's use last fit. So here's where we take the workflow and we, we're going to fit it using our split. So what this does is it, it um, fits one final time to the training set and evaluates one final time on the test set. So we, you know, it's about the same, especially if you look at the standard error here. And so that, so this is us finally coming back to the test set. So this is a linear model. So we can get out the workflow like this. Um, this is how you can get out a workflow. So these are all the words that are in here, right? Accessory, 
um, adventure, buildable, cargo. And since this is a linear model, we can tidy it like this. And this gives us the, um, this is the, the estimate, this is the coefficient in the linear model. And let's, um, let's arrange that so we can see the words, <clears throat> whoops, estimate, like so. Okay, so here are the words that are most associated with big Lego sets. Challenge, castle, calendar, um, Hogwarts, bucket. So the castles and the buckets have lots and lots of pieces. All right, so, so, so this is our model. And this right here, actually, this is, gets us out the workflow that we would want to um, deploy, that we would want to predict with later and new data. So let's talk about how we are going to do that. So I am going to um, load the vetiver R package, and I'm going to make a vetiver model called V. Let me take the same thing here, and then pipe it into vetiver model, and uh, let's call the name Lego sets, like this. Okay, and... Let's run this. So what we've made here now is a deployable model object. When we are, when we're, you know, doing all this stuff up here, we know a lot about the data that was used to um, train the model and what the model is like. And so if we record that um, into a deployable model object, like a deployable model bundle, then we can um, take that to a new computational environment. In this case, we are going to take it to a, um, a Docker container. So it only has one feature here because remember that feature is um, the name. And notice that I have, I've made a deployable model object here of my feature engineering together with my model. So it's like a, the bundled feature engineering and model together. That's what I'm going to deploy. That is often a really good option for many people. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to, um, uh, I am going to store this model, this model object somewhere. So I am going to um, uh, version, store, and publish this model. I am going to uh, take a board. Here I'm using um, our Studio Connect as my board. Um, it is very convenient. Um, but I also could uh, do this, like I have other options here, like board S3. Um, there's options like board uh, Azure, I think is the name of it. I can I can use one of these um, platforms as a place to put my model. I can make a model registry in that place. And I can say, where are all my models? I keep my all, all my models in X. So for example, in RStudio Connect. Um, I get this nice little um, prompt that tells me that I can document my model too. Maybe we can talk about that in a later um, in a later screencast. So I, I have my my model now has been written to this is our this is our demo um, our Studio Connect server. So it's it's there. It's uh, the 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 deployable model object is there. And if I train it again, say I get more data on Lego sets, um, I can version it. I can store it in the same place, and I can access both of the versions. Um, now though, let's get this ready for. Um, um, for me to put this into a Docker container. So I'm going to write a plumber file. So it's, uh, I'll just copy right here. So here's the name of my, the, where my pin is, where my vetiver model is. Um, and I pinned to co connect, but here I'm not going to deploy it to connect. There's kind of some nice like push button deployment for connect, but let's say I don't want to, um, I don't want to deploy it to connect. I want to deploy it somewhere else, anywhere that a Docker container can work. So I am going to write a um, plumber file that's not built to go into connect, but to go into a Docker container. And then I am going to write my Docker container. Vetiver write Docker here, which takes the Vetiver model as this object. And so what it is doing right now, it is it's going to generate a Docker file for me. So I don't have to I don't have to be in charge of it. And it it uses our our env to um, to 
um, make a lock file so that I can, in the Docker container, install exactly the um, exactly the uh, the the packages that I need to make new predictions. So let's take a look at these. So I have got um, let's look at the plumber file and let's look at the Docker file here. So this is what the plumber file. Remember, I didn't have to write this. This was generated for me. Notice it is um, it is strongly linked to a specific version of the model. So if, say, I, I make a new version of this model and I pin it into the same place, the, the deployment is still going to be strongly linked to the, this original version that I made. It's going to keep it there. Let's look at the Docker file now. Again, I didn't have to... Um, write this. I This was generated for me and it is going to, it knows exactly which system dependencies I need to install and then it's going to use that um, rn file to um, to install the packages, to install exactly the packages that I need using rn. And then this uh, sets up that plumber file. So if um, this isn't, this is not a great video for like an in, like an introduction to Docker totally, but if you've seen this a little bit, you, you'll know what this looks like. So we, I'm, I'm installing, I'm getting, um, uh, a Docker, a, a, I'm starting from a Docker container that has R installed in it with exactly the version of R that I use to train the model. I'm going to use the um, our Studio Public Package Manager to install packages here. I, this is the, like, what does Linux need in order to make those packages work? And then I'll do things like... Um, copy the rm over into the docker container. I'll use rm to install all the r packages. Then I'll copy the plumber file into the docker file and then set this entry point here that will um, that will run the um, docker, I'm sorry, will run the plumber router for me that I have made via this. So this, this is what we have here that gets us all ready. Um, now it is time actually for me to leave my precious R console and go to the terminal. So here's where I just generated those things that I have here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build my Docker container. So I've got Docker running right now on my, um, on my computer, and I am going to build the um, uh, the that Docker file. So I'm going to say Docker build. Uh, let's say let's call it like Lego set names like this, and I'm just going to say build that Docker file that you see right there. Ah, since okay, so if we look go back over here, I'm building this into a little like mini you know Linux computer that sits on my computer. Um, I'm actually on a um, uh, M1 chip here, and so uh, and and the the little Docker container that I'm going to build is not on ARM architecture, so I have to I have to do a special um, argument here, AMD 64, 64 like that. So what this is saying is like I'm making a little Docker container that has Linux that's that's re that's Intel based architecture, not ARM. So let's get this going. Let's see if this will start. And this is actually the slowest part of this. Um, it's getting, you know, it's getting, it's going through these layers here and doing all these bits. And this part is going to take a minute. So I'm going to pause my video and then I will come back once my Docker file is being done, being built into a Docker image. All right, we're back. It's done. So this took... I don't know, a handful of minutes. You can see the, all of these layers. You can see the ones that took, um, how, how much time they took. Like it only took, you know, 13 seconds to get the initial, um, initial uh, base image that has all in star, R installed. But the, um, the process of, of uh, installing all the R package, that's the part that takes the amount of time, like the most, that, that's the part that takes a couple minutes to get through. So my, um, my Docker file has now been built to a Docker um, image, Docker, um, like, a, like a way to make a bunch of little computers, right? Like the image that we can use to make them. And now the next thing I'm going to do is um, I am going to run it. So let's see, where is my... Why am I not? There we go. Okay. Um, does it not run all the way down? 
Hmm. Okay, so what's going on? Um, something's a little weird with my, um, let me do this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to run that Docker image that I made and make a Docker container widget with it. So first, um, so I say Docker run, and then I am going to, I would, I would give it the name, Lego set names like this. I'm going to add a few more things here. So <clears throat> uh, notice in here we expose this uh, port, but actually, to actually expose the port, um, let's see, I need to say uh, minus minus RM minus P, this is for the port, and so I'm going to say go to the 8000 port on the inside, and make it to the 8,000 port on the outside. So like the what's on the inside of the container, what's on the outside are there. And then um, let's see, I will show you how to, like what happens if I do this. The, um, I can put the, so now it's, it's starting, look, R has started, it's trying to run the, um, it's trying to run the plumber file, but it says, wait, I cannot connect to our Studio Connect. So you can put your, over here, when we put our, our model pin, our over here on the connect board, that can be anything. You just have to tell the little computer, the Docker container, how to authenticate to it. So if I go here and I am gonna pass in, I'm gonna go, <clears throat> over here and I'm going to pass in a file of um, environment variables that tell this Docker container how to authenticate to RStudio Connect. So I will say it is right here in my working directory like this and so now it is going to try again and this time hopefully it's going to work. Um, oh man this is so annoying. There we go. Okay, so it's connecting to our Studio Connect, um, and then it is running the plumber. So it's start up, and now it is ready to go. Let me click on this, <clears throat> and this is a this. Now I'm now in a browser. Notice that I like I'm just I'm just like here locally, but I'm running in that Docker container that I just showed you. And so let's let's interact. Let me make this a little bigger so it'll be easy to see. Um, I can you know there's a there's a health check endpoint that says like yes it's online. There's a pin URL endpoint which will tell me exactly where the model. Um, the model, the deployable model object that I have, where it's coming from, I can get that. But the real, the real important thing is down here at the predict endpoint. So if I, um, <clears throat> let's say that we have a, um, a bucket of, um, of mini figures here like this, and let's try this. And this is the, um, this is the predicted number of parts on the log 10 scale. So this is like 100. So th this is predicted to have 100 pieces in it. Um, this, what we're looking at right now, is um, interactive documentation for your API. It gives you a lot of really interesting and helpful information. For example, if you are collaborating with a software engineer coworker and they, you, you want to have a conversation, how do I call your model API? This gives it to you exactly right here. Like this tells you exactly what to do. So for example, what if I want to go here and what say I want to um, do more than one at a time like this. I would I can put this in here and let's say we have a um, uh, let's let's remind ourselves what how did this go? Let me look at um there we go. <laughs> oh my gosh. okay, <clears throat> so let's say we have Hogwarts. I mean, Hogwarts Castle it would be a would be a classic, but I think we should have a Hogwarts Hogwarts um, shuttle craft with um, um, with Lego with, with Lego friends the friends um, with Lego friends on horseback. I don't know what and their horse stable and their horse stable like that. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So we'll get back these predictions. So you can see this, the Hogwarts shuttlecraft um, has fewer, but not dramatically fewer. Let's, um, 
let's look at what are the things that are the let me fix this again. Okay. What are the what words were had the fewest? Okay, batteries, plates. These are the um things that just have one. Okay. So what if we have <clears throat> what if we have like a Hogwarts battery? Just a Hogwarts battery. <clears throat> Man, that is just like 10. What if it's a Star Wars battery? Um, oh man. Oh man, we are, this is not many pieces at all, right? Not many pieces at all. So we can, we can add more here and, and it shows us, hey, what, how do we make this API call? How is it that we make this API call? So let's see, um, what's the, ah, uh, it's Heart Lake, Heart Lake, um, bucket of trucks and horses. So this will be high because I used, um, oh, that's even more. What if it's a part like bucket of, of buckets? This is a linear model. So this is just gonna, you know, like go up a lot. Nice. All right. So what we have done here, we trained a model, kind of a silly model. <laughs> we trained a model. We built a Docker container to um, deploy that model. I'm interacting it here with it locally, but of course the reason why you might be interested in a, um, in a Docker container is because they're so portable. So whether, you know, whether you deploy models on, you know, your own servers or on um, a cloud platform, a Docker container like this is super portable and lets you take the model that you trained with the tools that you like and take it wherever it needs to go. All right, we did it. We trained the model, then we um, used Vetiver to, to um, version and deploy the model. We deployed the model using, um, using Docker. I guess you could technically argue you didn't see me actually deploy it, like put it in its, um, uh, you know, where it would go because I was using Docker locally. But the great thing about, um, about learning a little bit about how to use Docker is that it lets you take something that does work locally and put it wherever you need it to go. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.